Hi guys, welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to go through a quick run through of how to install a normal boxed or normal downloaded add-on from FSX into the Steam edition of FSX. Now, I've got a lot of my stuff uh, set up on my E drive uh, with the FSX downloads and this is a list of some of the FSX downloads I have. Obviously I have quite a few. But what I've done is I've expanded a couple of them. And what I'm going to install is one of the latest Aerosoft ones, the A318319. Um, because it is quite a significant package to install. So we'll go into that, we'll double click that, and uh, we will start the process. So it asks us if we want to run the file. Yes, we want to run the file. And yes, we want it in English, and then it goes into its install shield. Okay, now, one of the things with Steam, uh, yes, I want to install it. Of course I want to install it, and want to accept that. Personalized during installation, this is standard. Right. I'm just going to fill this bit out. I shall see you guys in a second. Okay, so I've just filled in the registration details. Choose Flight Simulator X, click Next, and it asks for your destination folder. So let's browse. What we're going to do is let's go to this window here. It installs on my device or my machine uh, automatically to the hard drive E. Double click on Steam. We're looking for Steam Apps, Common, FSX, and that is our location. So let's uh, copy that, go back into this, paste that into there, click OK. Next, it comes up with all that. Next. OK. And there we go. This is all sticking in. You can see flashes up every now and again with the common blah 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 blah. So it's all we know it's all installing into the right place. I'll leave that to work its magic and I shall speak to you guys in a second. OK, it's just finished that. Uh, asks if I want to do FS2 crew. At the moment, I'm not going to do that. In fact, no. Hang on. Yeah, let's do that. Let's just let's just go for the whole hog. Um, we might as well. So fine, fine, fine. FSX, fine. I agree with that. Fine. Uh, default directory. We're going to use the same directory. Let's stick that over the top. Next, start and we'll leave that to do its work. This one does take quite a long time when it gets to the end. You can see it said do not click cancel. That's because it gets to the 100% and then sits there and thinks for a while. And whilst it thinks about it, um, I shall uh, see you in a second. I shall sit here and you can see it in about uh, two seconds time. Okay, and finally we get to the end where it says RAS Professional by FS2 Crew has been successfully installed. So exit that. Yes, I want to restart my computer now, so I shall see you guys in a moment because I'm going to have to shut off the video recording, otherwise it won't record the video, and I'm just going to click restart my computer in a moment, and I will see you with the results. So here we are, back again guys, this is the uh, the desktop, we've just installed our uh, aircraft, um, and we're going to see what happens. Here's Microsoft Flight Simulator X Steam Edition, updating Steam, verifying installation. And uh, let's just put the password in. Connecting to the account. Blah de blah de blah. And here we come. FSX Steam Edition. Up with the splash screen. Doesn't take too long to load, actually, to be fair. Um, I will give it the credit it deserves in as much as it's uh, been simplified for its ease of access, or granted it's been given its ease of access uh, in such a fashion that it's not too problematic. Having a think about it at the moment, it's probably um, probably going to have a think about it when we load it up with the uh, the Aerosoft A318319. Uh, this is the default version. Uh, I haven't updated any scenery. You can see it still comes up with the default flight. So free flight, it comes up with a stupid little steam community thing which I'm not overly interested in. Change the aircraft. Here it is. CFM British Airways. Yes, I want to run it. Yes, I think it's trusted. Yes, I want to run that. Yes, I think it's trusted. Yes, I want to run that. Yes, I think it's trusted. Yes, I want to run that. Yes, I think it's trusted. Ridiculous amounts of this. You would have thought that they would have been able to do one tick box for the whole thing, but uh, apparently not. I would have done an update my uh, interwebby netty linky thingy. Let's change Friday Harbour. I don't really like that. It's pretty, but it's uh, pointless. 
Innsbruck default runway. OK, fly now. As I said in the in the video about FSX uh, Steam Edition, it it's the same program. Um, what I wanted to do with this is see how it installs. So let's have a look. Yeah, it's got quite a bit of stutter because it's got the old uh, the old setup in terms of uh, the options. So and this is demanding on frame rates. Please do not misunderstand how demanding this is on frame rates. You need a decent system to run this at any decent level. Uh, let's have a look outside. Texture's good. All looks right. Look all the controls around. Yeah, you can see the controls are moving behind. Uh, behind. There you go. You can see it's all moving correctly as you'd expect. Jump back in. The sounds look good. The cockpit looks okay uh, as you'd expect. The little scrolly outy bit works. Uh, this should work. So aircraft state. Uh, load a cold and dark state. It comes cold and dark. Everything turns off. Go up here, turn the batteries on, go back down here, you've got this all back on now so you can go into your checklist, all that kind of good stuff. So, you know, all seems to work guys. What can I say? Um, you know, external power on, got that all on, let's just turn the APU on, let's turn some lights on, Navin logo and we'll put the beacon on as well just for the sake of uh, having fun. This isn't a checklist. At the end of the day, this is uh, this is just me messing around, just seeing if it works. Let's just turn that up, see if that's working. Turn that up, see if that's working. Um, just scroll up here a bit, get rid of that. I'll turn the tip toolbar off at some later date. Um, I'm just messing around now. Uh, let's get it into a state where I can get it airborne. So, go down here, aircraft state. Uh, Takeoff state. Let it sort itself out. It's got flaps one. It's starting its own engines, and this is going to be the, the be all and end all. If this thing takes off and flies fine, then we know it's installed fine. Um, let it just start itself up. Get into that. Here we go. Perth in it. Data programming. Fuel prediction. Blah 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 blah. Flight plans. All there. So uh, the FMS seems to be working. I'm not going to use the FMS or the auto throttle. Now one of the things with this is the uh, the throttle setup. And yeah, it's it's, it's not set up my throttles quite correctly, is it? Uh, yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see what it thinks about that. Are we both started now? Yeah, I've had this before with the uh, the Warthog because that's the joystick I use, so it's not a problem. That's a Warthog issue. I had it before with this. Um, but anyway, let's get off the ground and see how it flies. Shut up. As I say, I'm, I couldn't be bothered about doing this accurately because all I want to do is see if the program works, if the download works in the program. Um, it is an issue with the Warthog joystick, it sometimes doesn't uh, doesn't acknowledge it with the Airbus down here in terms of the throttle, so I'm just using my throttles at the moment. But I know I can fix that, that's not a problem. But as I say, that's not unique to the aircraft, that's unique to... Uh, here we go. That's something that I've had previously with the, my FSX and P3D variants. So, So there you go, there's the, there's the question answered guys. Does it work in uh, FSX Steam, that method? It seems to. This is a fairly detailed add-on. Uh, this is one of the add-ons that um, is quite intensive on the processor, on the CPU. You can see it stutters as I scroll around. Um, as I say, I've got my settings set up. But that's how I've installed a couple of my add-ons. Um, and to all intents and purposes, it seems to work. So uh, there doesn't seem to be too much to panic about, guys. And with that, I shall speak to you soon. Take care.